All right, guys, so it's the middle of March, and uh, in this video, we're going to go over how we can maximize the basically the entire potential of the soil in our food plots and how we can how that helps the deer herd uh, through the nutrients intake and then also how we can supplement that with uh, maximizer mineral. My name is Josh Pretzer and I'm a farmer and a hunter and I took the Dare to Compare challenge. Let me show you how to get the most out of your investment. So we're behind my house. This field behind me, the soil is 6.3. Um, I like my soil pH to be around 6.5. Uh, granted, I'm in the row crop industry, corn, soybeans, and wheat. Um, so, you know, but a lot of guys brush off the, oh, it's only a deer plot. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. And it's that's right, it doesn't have to be perfect. And in a lot of areas of the country, we're dealing with high pH and low pH. Um, but this series is about maximizing the opportunity that we have. Um, so like I said, this soil here behind my house where I'm going to have a plot is 6.3. That's a good pH. Um, our area where, where I live, we deal with low pH most of the time. Low pH is, is uh, solved with lime, ag lime. Um, I have it spread on the field. Um, and it's really crucial, especially right now, to take a soil sample, see where you're at. Um, you know, most of your ag companies, uh, your local co-ops, uh, you can even have a, we I can take a soil sample and mail it up to K-State and they'll send me the results back. But so we're going to take that pH, say um, I had a field this year that was uh, 5.7, that was low pH. I wanted to raise the potential of that field. Now when I say raise potential of the field, so when you're in that 6, 6, 6.5 range on your pH, the plants that you plant are able to capture the maximum amount of nutrients, your, your nitrogen, your phosphorus, uh, your calcium, zinc, all, everything that's in your soil. If I can plant soybeans, and as a farmer I want to raise the best crops I possibly can because my income is, relies on that. But, and for the deer, you know, if we can raise the best crops or food plots that we possibly can, then the deer are going to have that much more forage. Um, it's going to have more beans later into the year um, that they can get their nutrition from. So, you know, if we can just maximize the opportunity that we have with the soil that we have, you know, it's just going to be one more step and a key to getting the everything out there to the deer that we possibly can. So I talked about low pH, uh, correcting that with ag lime. Um, I had ag lime, like I said, put on that field. It raised the pH to 6.3. Um, and we've seen yields uh, basically come up because of the correction in the soil. Um, the crops are able to, to maximize the nutrients I put out there, the, the fertilizer. Um, so for the high pH soils, um, at least around here, the common practice is to spread gypsum. That helps bring the pH down. And high pH is a lot tougher to correct than low pH. You can correct high pH soils with uh, organic matter and some other things that take a long period of time, but gypsum is going to be one of the things that's going to bring your high pH down to that acceptable level in the quickest amount of time. Um, so we talked about that, um, and while our crops, are, uh, crops, food plots, either one, all of the above, are taking in all the nutrients on this corrected soil, you know, say we have a good growing year, the soybeans are growing good, the corn, wheat, uh, you know, your deadly dozen, harvest salad, whatever plots you have out there, clover, etc. Um, all of those plants are absorbing nutrients, your phosphorus, you know, nitrogen, potassium, and so on and so forth. All of the, so all those nutrients are being absorbed in the plants and the deer are eating those plants and that's how they're getting the nutrients. Um, you know, if you look at the, the high ag production states like Iowa, Illinois, Nebraska, Kansas, uh, northern Missouri, Ohio, uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, you know, it's known as the Corn Belt, really. Um, just the states that are really known for high production agriculture, that's where the biggest of deer and the most deer are that 
of large antler size and body weight as well are grown. But, and that's largely to do, and I would say, in my personal opinion, almost completely due to the nutrients in the soil being so right for the, for the production of agriculture and the deer being able to take up those nutrients. Um, so as the deer ingest uh, the, you know, like I said, all the food plots, the row crops, however it may be, they're taking in the nutrients. But an easier, I guess a more simplified way uh, of getting those, new, those, those minerals to the deer is through supplemental mineral. Uh, and I've had real world mineral out for, I think I'm, this, this will be year number three. Um, and something I've really noticed about it is that the deer, on, at least on my farm here at my house, use it 365 days a year. I used to go out and throw a lot of salt based um, you know, minerals out there and I would get a lot of pictures. So as deer hunters, I think that's a fault that a lot of us have is we just, you know, when we pull that, that card and when it says, you know, 500, 1,000, 5,000, however it may be pictures, we get stoked, you know, because, oh man, the deer are really hitting this. But a lot of the reason deer are hitting some of these mineral sites that are mostly salt based is because they have to ingest and take so much in to get what they need. Um, in the real world maximizer mineral, they don't have to eat as much to get what they need so it's less stress on the deer herd so you know i'm, I'm going to wrap this up uh it's really crucial to get those minerals out there and real world um what they did is they actually ground antlers up to see what they're made out of um, and so then they base their mineral off of that let's give the deer what they need not just cram a bunch of salt into you know whatever product and some other micronutrients or mineral however it may be and throw it out there um, so don't don't get caught up on the whole picture game and like i said we all get are guilty of that you know we want as many pictures as possible and it's a lot of fun to get pictures of big bucks does lots of fawns and everything but we have to keep in mind what's best for our deer herd so um to recap do your soil samples. March is a great time to do it. I'm going to be doing a lot um, for agricultural purposes here just as soon as we get this snow and the ground thawed and dried out. Um, I know a lot of states are dealing with this right now. So as soon as you can, get your soil samples in. See where your soils are at. Go off of there and a lot of soil samples you can put in your desired yield and crop and they'll send back a prescription on how to go about that, how much of what nutrients to put out there. So, you know, and then the, that basically leads into, you know, growing the best crops and food plots that we possibly can, the deer taking it in, um, and, uh, you know, which is going to maximize the herd health. So that's going to wrap uh, this video up, guys. You know, I hope this is helpful. Um, if you have any questions or, or, you know, about improvements we can make, just throw them out there. We'd love to hear it. Um, like I said from the start, I don't know everything, but what I do know, I'm trying to put together for you guys to uh, learn from my mistakes, maybe shorten the learning curve and um, get the most out of, out of our efforts and uh, do the best that we can for our wildlife and for the properties that we manage.